Hey all, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Sofa Baton U1. This is a smart remote control that has built-in Bluetooth, can connect to TV boxes, regular TVs, DVD players, sound systems, and even has a companion app to help you assist you in that process. Now it's poised as a competitor to the likes of Logitech's Harmony smart remotes for a fraction of the cost. In fact, it should be selling for around 50 bucks or so. So if you want a unified smart remote to control all of your home appliances, air conditioners, TVs, TV boxes even, which use Bluetooth, this might be an interesting option to take a closer look at. It will automatically learn different IR codes from existing remotes and then add it into its built-in memory. So here is the packaging here. It's done pretty well, very clean overall look. And again, the App Store, you can find the companion app, which is already available, support up to 50 devices on the single remote, advanced OLED display, which is energy efficient, and a programmable key. So if we open up the box here, inside we have just a quick manual that tells you how to download it and then follow the instructions. We have just the remote itself, along with a two AA batteries. So taking a closer look at the design of this uh, smart remote, we have the aforementioned OLED display, which we can wake it from sleep by tapping on the power key uh, for a few seconds. It's a little bit on the damp side in terms of its brightness. Now on the back here we have some ergonomic grooves that makes the remote a little bit easier for gripping. Here's the IR kind of sensor part and underneath here is where we have the two AA batteries. We are instructed to tap on the E and the minus key at the same time for a few seconds until it reads pairing on the display and also connects to the app. So we've paired with the Toshiba TV here and I can simply tap on the power key now and the television will turn on tapping on the remote keys and we see the current layout on our remote. Now all the green keys are the ones which were assigned automatically through the database uh, code. But if I want to customize a key, you can see that it can also learn a specific command uh, that's going to be blue. For example, here the source key originally wasn't working on uh, the default remote. So if I tapped on this key, it wouldn't try to change between the different HDMI sources. Nothing would actually happen. Uh, in order to add this functionality, I needed to actually learn this function from the existing TV remote. As a quick demo of that, I can tap on this key again, and it will simply say reassign remote key, learn from original remote, edit macro key. So if we tap on learn from original remote, I would simply tap on the original key that I want this button to be assigned to one to two inches away, tap on hold, and it will try and learn it. We also see a progress bar on the app, and it says learning is successful. Now on the app here, we can also swipe over to take a look at additional settings. The remote does have an accelerometer, so you can have the feature of remote raise to wake, so very similar to a fitness tracker or an Apple Watch using that gesture. You can also set a screen timeout, and some other firmware information as they become available can be pushed over to the remote. Now let's try adding another device here. Let's uh, try adding a Blu-ray disc player. This player happens to be a Samsung 3D model and we can simply try finding it in the database first. And again, this is a Samsung model. It tells us to point the remote at the player and test the commands to get it right. Tap on next. So right now we're gonna click the first key, which is for power and see if it's working. Point it at your device and then tap on the power key. And indeed, the player actually turned off. So we can see that this function did work. If not, you can actually cycle through some of the other codes that they have in the database for the Samsung player. So in our case, uh, this power command is functional. I'm going to tap on yes. So we can go to the next feature, which is going to be testing out the pause key. Again, downloading this now to the remote to test it out. So I can use the scroll dial here to select back and forth between the different devices I want to control. Let's try using this one now for the Blu-ray player. And it's very easy to use the keys there to cycle back and forth between its uh, various menus. And it's again, very responsive. So that works quite well. Let's try adding a third device, maybe a more generic, uh, say TV box or streaming box. So this time we're gonna tap on IR learning mode completely. So please locate your original remote, which is this one here for our more generic Android TV box. And now point it at the U1 remote, tap on next. We can then press on the icon of the key that it wants to learn. And after a few seconds, it should be able to learn that command. So it's a little bit more tedious to learn the keys uh, one at a time. As you can see here, we've already added two of the D-pad keys. With that being said, it's not going to work 100% of the time. You'll still occasionally get failures. Uh, so for example, if we want to learn the home key, which takes us to the home page of our Android TV box, we do also have a home button here. I would again point on this home key here. You'll get to a certain point and then sometimes say uh, learning failed. 
Finally, let's try connecting it to a Bluetooth device. As Bluetooth can only pair with one device at a time, the remote will now disconnect from the smartphone app and then try to connect with our other device. This says pairing with other. Even say on a computer or a Chromebook, it can be recognized as the sofa baton and it should be successful. Uh, so from our remote, it's gonna show up as other because right now it's set up to be working, it thinks it's working with something like an Amazon Fire TV stick. But again, through the application, you can change the logo and we can control most things that we want to, even on a computer. So for example, things like volume, as you can see here, work pretty well. And because it is using Bluetooth, you don't need to be pointing directly at your device. It will still function and it has a range of around 10 meters or 33 feet. I do kind of wish that Sofa Baton would also maybe release an update that has a QWERTY keyboard perhaps tucked away on the back of the remote that makes text entry easier as well, especially since this model doesn't have a built-in microphone. So you don't have access to say voice search or voice commands like some of the built-in remotes using Bluetooth with a Xiaomi Mi Box or a Amazon Fire remote. That's more or less it for our hands-on review of the Sofa Baton Smart Remote Control. Companion app makes management and adding new devices really simple and straightforward. Overall, I think this is a great alternative to, again, a Logitech Harmony remote or a more expensive Smart Universal remote. It has all the capabilities here. It's easy to use. And again, the whole premise is it's going to be cheaper as well. So do keep an eye out if you want one device to manage all of your uh, consoles, TVs, players, and other streaming devices. So be sure to check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Sofa Baton U1 Smart Universal Remote.